Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get into our first featured artist, which is really our headlining artist for the weekend. This is an artist that is uh, synonymous with Andy Warhol, Jean-Michel Basquiat. His artwork is reflected in permanent collections of over 60 permanent museum collections around the world, talking about the Whitney uh, National Gallery. It, it's one of the most important artists in terms of uh, significance to the art world and commercially viable and, and significant to the art world in terms of collecting as well. So I'm looking at the work of Mark Kastabi, and uh, he goes back and forth between New York and Rome, and he's actually in Rome currently. We recently toured a group of VIP collectors through his home and, uh, and had a great experience with him as part of that program that I'll be speaking to more throughout the weekend. But let's teleport to his studio in Rome. Let's see if we can find him. Mark, can you hear me? Hello, Cole Waters, how you doing? Good, good to be with you. How, how's things going over in Rome? Well, it's been quite an adventure this summer. I feel, uh, I feel like we've been uh, showcasing you a lot this summer over in that section yeah. of the world. Yeah, I've had tremendous success with my art career and the latest success with this very successful cruise um, with Jordan Sitter to Iceland. Oh, and nice. Unfortunately, yeah. Uh, they did like a five or six hundred thousand dollars of my work, and then I got off the ship wow. early to come back to Rome yep. to work because there's such an incredible demand for my paintings that I need time to work. But I had a two-hour period to do some sightseeing in Iceland in a town called uh, Akariru or something like that, Akariru. And during my little walk, I got hit by a car. I saw that so, on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, how are you recovering? Got, Is everything okay? I, uh, well. Look, I'm standing. You can't see my head injury anymore. Got a little pain in the ribs, but it's okay. getting better every day. But okay. when it happened, that was so scary. I thought I was going to die. Some people think I actually did die and that I'm a cat and I'm oh. on my second life now. Oh, okay, and you reincarnated. Now it's my, oh. Yeah, yeah, because my art style is evolving and changing, and I'm more inspired than ever, and I'm so grateful to be alive because life, human life is so fragile. I thought about human life is, but... Cockroach life is not, neither is ant life. You know, they're going to go on forever. Well, that's but fair. As humans, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> yeah. But so I'm, I'm fine. I loved Iceland despite Great. that. And, uh, and I'm more productive than ever. And I'm super thrilled about working with you guys. Well, you know, I, I just love the fact that we're able to feature your work in such a dynamic way now. In this catalog, we have more than 100 pieces. You know, you are... As, you know, such an important artist to the art world. You're in so many museums. Your art's been represented in so many different forums. And to finally mm -hmm. be with Park West Gallery, I think it's really exciting for our collectors, but it's exciting for, for I think, your career as well, because we're going to give you exposure in an additional way, maybe to in a way that you hadn't had prior. So I'm super excited to be continuously yeah. showcasing your works. Thank you. Well, you already have been for over two years. I have my friends and associates who email me and call me all the time saying, oh, Mark, I just saw you work on a cruise ship. These are people who know, don't go in art galleries usually. Yes. Uh, but now I'm, I'm getting all this great exposure and, and I'm very grateful for it, super grateful for Albert Scaglione, who's the genius behind this whole infrastructure. It's just amazing. I, uh, anyway. Uh, so those of you who- Can like I share? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, so for those folks that are tuning in, maybe seeing your work for the first time, you have kind of an amazing story. You, you made it to New York in the kind of the center of art in the early 1980s, and you kind of kind of developed and exploded on the scene throughout the 1980s. Can you talk a little bit about how it transitioned from you to becoming so recognized in the art world? Okay. Well, it wasn't overnight. Uh, not an overnight sensation. I'm more like a chess player, and I've studied chess, and to win at chess... It's a, it's a matter of an accumulation of small advantages and occasional big advantages. Like one big advantage that I had was my decision to move to New York in 1982, which is the center of the art world. And that helped a lot. But even that wasn't enough to make me a rich and famous artist. But now I, I just recently gave a TED Talk on how to become a rich and famous artist. And I have six rules on how to do it. Uh, can I run them by you really Let's quickly? do it. Let's, let's run them okay. through it. Yeah. Rule number one is make great art. Number two That's is... That's a good one. Li yeah, <laughs> it helps. Number two is, ha is live in New York. Number three, circulate. Number four, uh, be professional. Number five, have a story. And number six, get other people to work for you. So uh, all the famous artists that I know of have done those things with a few exceptions. You know, Picasso didn't move to New, live in New York, but he didn't have to because 
and in his time, Paris was the center of the art world. Right, the point is, you have to live where the action is, where the opportunities are in any career in the art world. It's still New York, number one. So uh, after a year of trial and error, I finally figured out about rule number uh, three, which is circulate, go to art openings, so network. I went to uh, Leo Castelli Gallery. I met Andy Warhol, Basquiat, and all these famous artists very quickly. And that just made everything click. And I got invited to be in a lot of group shows. And then it led up to the 60 museums that you mentioned. By the way, little correction, I'm not in the Whitney. My brother, Paul Kostabi, who an artist that you guys represent too, is in the Whitney, but I'm not. I'm okay. in MoMA. Yep. Yeah. I'm in MoMA, uh, the, the Guggenheim, the Metropolitan Museum, and uh, the, the Corcoran Museum, and the LA County Museum, and 60 museums. But but I, I don't need to, uh, yeah, I, I'd like to be in the Whitney. I'm working on it, but anyway. Maybe I was thinking of it when I just interviewed your, your brother a few weeks ago, getting it, yeah. getting it, getting oh, it yeah. across. <laughs> Great. That's yeah. nice to hear. How did that interview go? Oh, I loved it. I loved it. Your, your brother's a cool cat. <laughs> Let's say he that. He is. He is. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. He's a great artist, great person, and I'm so glad he's part of the Park West team and family, too. So here's a painting I just finished. Oh, wow. It's called, it's called Tell Me Something I Can Hold On To Forever and Never Let Go. And it's a romantic picture of a, a, a man holding a red umbrella protecting this woman uh, during this light rain. And you see the whole thing through this box. You kind of in a small box looking at the street scene mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with the water reflections and red, yellow, and blue. I'm very proud of this painting. I love the and geometrical elements. Yep, thank you. And it's 60 by 45 centimeters. And if you want to see the back, that's how I document my paintings in the back. Second signature on the back with the title, the date, mm -hmm. and the dimensions. Then later I'm going to put the archive code on that. And then... Uh, Talk about ahead. the Kastabi figure and just the, the inspiration uh, and the idea behind the figure. The Kustabi figure is a faceless figure, which uh, therefore becomes a universal language uh, that transcends racial and national boundaries. So everyone can read their own story into it. And I do that figure in many styles. I do it in line drawings, volumetric pencil drawings, ink drawings, paintings, like smoothly rendered, uh, oil paintings on canvas. And also I do it in, in this style. This is kind of a new Ooh, style nice. of mine. Thank you. I love this painting. When I put this on social media, it got a tremendous amount of positive feedback immediately. And the title is Celebrating Eternal Ecstasy. And you can see there it's a couple toasting. And yeah. it's primarily red, yellow, and blue with lots of glows in the background. There's the appearance um, of just, texture throughout this painting. It just has that feel yes, to it. Yeah. That there are patterns in the background. Mm -hmm. And I'm very proud of this new development in my work, which is, uh, you know, I do it just because I love it, but it happens to also sell really well. Uh, on the cruise um, uh, to Iceland, there was intense competitive bid bidding over one of these types of paintings that Park West now has just received some of. Here's another one. This one is this. called the thank you. It's called the Melody of Mystery and Ecstasy. And it's got a lot of subplots going on in it. There's a dancing couple here, an embracing couple here. There's a couple here on top of the Brooklyn Bridge. Um, and this woman, this ambitious woman sitting on her windowsill, thinking about conquering New York as a great singer. And here are the piano keys for her accompanist. So it's all about, uh, oh, and there's another, the echo of this woman is up here, with kind of the colors of the British flag, different kind of red, yellow, blue scheme. And Rubik's cubes floating around, and, and see like the, the foot is right on a yellow part of a cube here, and here. a lot of little intricate color details, like this little square here. It's yellow, but with a purple square in it and a white square, and it's lighting up this head. So it's very complex form or formally, Mm -hmm. And it's horizontal, and I'm very proud of this. So, uh, yeah, there I like you go. The, I like the dimensions I, on that work too. That's a, yeah. You know, I like this the variety and the range of things that we have is is pretty amazing. I'm looking at the catalog right now, and uh, I'm thinking about the hundred plus works that we have in, in our side that's physically going to be yeah. here this weekend. Uh, can you speak about transporting the muse of inspiration? This is a published original. Oh, yeah. It's really the star of our show this weekend. Yeah. Well, this, that is an epic painting, very large, 100 and, 
30 by 200 centimeters, horizontal, mm -hmm. and it, it uh, speaks of art history and specifically of Venice's role in art history. Because you can see there's this, um, the, these figures, faceless figures are holding up the muse, or horizontal, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the muse of art history. And, and all of the art that she inspired is in the water and on the, the land. Lichtenstein and Mondrian and... Yeah, Lichtenstein, Mondrian. There's a reference to Robert Rauschenberg, who changed art history in, in the United States' in favor in 1964 when he won the Golden Lion at the Venice Biennial. Uh, that's what kind of switched everything from Europe to New York. Uh, so it was a historic moment that happened there in Venice. Um, and then there's a Louise Bourgeois spider. She was a fascinating artist who passed away about 10 years ago or so. And I had the honor of knowing her rather well. I would go to her house. She's in every museum, major works at MoMA, for example. Was she and in New York helped, or where, where did she live? She was in, she was in New York. She was okay. French, but mm -hmm. she, and she knew Marcel Duchamp mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Mark Rothko and all the top giants of, of 20th century art history. And she was so generous. She would hold these salons at her, her townhouse in Chelsea where people could, would go to her, visit her and bring her chocolates and they critique art. Uh, emerging artists could bring their art there to have it critiqued by her and the various mm -hmm. museum curators and per personalities who would go there. So that's an homage to her because she has also conquered Venice. Uh, so it's it's a painting completely full of art historical references. You got, of course, Campbell's a, Soup, little tip of the cap to Andy Warhol. Of course. And then you guys also have the drawing for that painting. Yeah. Uh, which has a which has a different title. The drawing is called Support System. And it has color in it. You, the drawing ha has some color elements in it. Usually my drawings are black and white, but sometimes they have uh, collage elements in color or sometimes And that reflects pencil. kind of the stages, the process for you? Yeah, I almost always start with the drawing and mm -hmm. then study it and, and blow it up to make a big painting, but things change along the way. Let me ask you about the, uh, the plunger in the painting. Oh, right. The plunger is a classic Kustabi icon. Mm -hmm. It's it's an instrument used to unclog the toilets of the modern mind. <laughs> okay, I like that. That's great. So I've not had a drawing that uh, was full color, color elements, I guess, in it, uh, in one of these collections before. Is that something you commonly do? I, I, I've always had drawings, which are always coveted. They're always top collecting recommendations. But this seems to be a unique variation for me. Like, it's a it's a different context. Uh, are you talking about support system? Yeah, the drawing. Yes, with, with the yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, 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 and you can see that how things change from the drawing to the painting. But mm -hmm. I think what it would be great is if whoever buys the painting also gets the drawing and to hang them near each other because there's a conversation going on there. Certainly is, and for the collector, they're going to have collector's cash. So they might get the opportunity. We shall see. Uh, so let me ask you about a learning from the past. Another published original painting. Yeah, Learning from the Past is actually an earlier painting that has been in my bedroom here in Rome for like about over 20 years, and I decided to finally sell it. Uh, and it's also one of my recent Venice paintings that's going to be published in a major book. All my Venice recent Venice paintings, plus this earlier one, will be published in this lavish art history book. Um, and uh, it is an ins the background is inspired by Canaletto, who uh, was... Uh, an, uh, an Italian artist who painted scenes of Venice magnificently, and he sold them to tourists from from England, for example. Okay. Uh, but he's in every art history book, and you can see Venice from the past in the background of my painting. And the couple on the swing come from a, it's a Kustabi image of two faceless figures on a swing, but that's inspired by a, a French artist named Co, C-O-T. Um, and... Uh, uh, it's in the Metropolitan Museum, and it's been reproduced on many posters. And it's called Springtime, the co-painting, C-O-T. But uh, I've, I've revisited those two images many times in my own style. Mm -hmm. So it's the, and, and there again, I'm learning from the past, from French art history as well as Italian. By the way, just to interject here, yeah. I make paintings all sizes, but you may have noticed this big one here. Oh, wow. This one here. Yeah. Um, this one is called Who's Your Daddy? And uh, it's huge. And we talked about how drawings turn into paintings. Here is the drawing. Now, this painting is a collaboration between me and Enzo Kuki, 
who's one of Italy's top artists, one of the most famous, who emerged in the 80s. And uh, we made the drawing together. There's Enzo at a cafe working okay. on the drawing. And then here's me working on the same drawing in my studio. Wow. And then this painting was created. And uh, uh, I sold it way back in the year 2005 uh, through an art dealer in Rome. And then I noticed it came up for auction recently. So I decided to buy it back. And it's almost three by four uh, meters. So, uh, you know. Wow, that's a museum and... painting if I've seen one. That's awesome. <laughs> I think so, but you never know. It could end up in a private residence. It fits in my house. It doesn't even touch the floor. There's this rack here. Yeah, but that's a big room. I've been in that room. In terms of, you got yeah. you got a big ceiling there. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, my I think you, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. You, you have another painting that I like a lot called uh, "Emotional Rescue." Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. The one where the the man is carrying the woman through the the flooded um, uh, San Marco Piazza in Rome, which happens a lot in real life. Uh, that's going to be in the book too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, this collection is all from your personal archives. We have a few things that are new coming out of your studio, but all of this is pretty much from your private collection. Yes, that is correct. What about this work to my left that is um, it, with the life is like, you never know what you'll get. So it's like life is like oh, a box of yeah. shapes. Oh, <laughs> Well, that's a romantic painting that deals with, uh, you know, heart-shaped boxes and chocolates. Yeah. And, yeah. and and the title is a playful reference to that famous quote. Um, I, I think it's one of my best paintings. Uh, I love the very rich and subtle use of color. Like the sculpture. And a romantic theme. This is my drawing studio. Okay. This is where I sit and make drawings. Oh, excellent, yeah. Like this, like these. Here are two similar drawings that I just made. I made this one first, and then this one. And I, I drew this because I want to make a sculpture, a life-size sculpture of this scene. Oh, I see. You, you see, it's two angels, but each one only has one wing. Uh -huh. And in order for them to fly, they have to be together. Wow. So this good. is going to be a life-size bronze sculpture. First, I made this one, which is nicely drawn but then i thought the wings didn't look quite right so i redrew it with these wings being more curved and i also gave contraposto to the foot here you see mm. here the the guy's feet are on the on the ground firmly i thought that wouldn't be as good as if one foot was back so this is going to be much more exciting as a sculpture but the draw the drawing here is good so there this was called this is called embracing the hair and now and this one is yet to be titled. This okay. is the definitive one that the sculpture is being made of. And I, so I sit here at this table and draw. I also sign Park West. Uh, uh, Limited editions. G. Clay's on canvas yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and then I here's my computer where I uh, uh, run my studio in New York when I'm not there. And life is pretty perfect. There's my atomic clock. Do you know what that is? <laughs> I do not know what that is. That is an atomic clock. Anyone can get one for about $20 or so okay. on Amazon. But the great thing is when daylight savings time comes, you don't have to fiddle with your change in the clock. It's automatic like your clock on the phone. Okay. All right. Well, we so, like that. But it's, but it's a wall clock. It's a wall clock. I see. So I, everyone should get an atomic clock or two <laughs> or three for their house. I like Make that. Make your life much, much happier. Well, my friend, I appreciate you letting us see the creative process and show us those amazing paintings you've been working on. I know you're, uh, you're, it's a bit later for you over in Rome, but appreciate you taking the time to be with us. And uh, if I have any questions, I'm going to reach out to you this weekend because we have a lot of pieces, a lot of folks who are going to be inquiring. It's exciting for us to have a, a show this large and extensive. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you for taking some time to, to be with us. It's been a pleasure. Okay, my Hope friend. To see you again soon. I will. I'll see you sometime okay. soon in another VIP tour with some collectors. Thanks so, so much, Mark. Okay. Thank you, Cole. Bye. Cheers. Bye-bye, Mark. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was Mark Kastabi, and you never know where we're going to go because he's got so much going on in his amazing studio and career, so I hope you enjoyed that look. And any information